<laughs> Ernest goes to jail. Ernest gets paroled. Hmm. Dungeon Master. Greetings, Erod, mightiest of warriors. I have a quest for thee. Would said quest involve the slaying of a certain horrid film that has plagued D&D fans for over a decade? Young Erod, your cleverness is only rivaled by thy courage. Does thy still possess the hammer of power given to thee by the guardian Lorelei? Yay. Tell me, young Erod, will this piece of sinister celluloid live to plague my cavaliers one more day? I say thee nay. In a world of uncertainty, where movie theaters are plagued by remakes and sequels. In a world where big budget movies can still suck. In this world, we have the Blockbuster Buster. I'm Erod, and I'm the Blockbuster Buster. For over three decades, one role-playing game has encouraged sci-fantasy fans to interact with one another and use their imagination. And that game is Dungeons & Dragons. Created by the late, great Gary Gygax. Greetings! It's a pleasure to meet you. Dungeons & Dragons was the first home game to actually receive awards, as well as being the first to be translated into different languages. Now, while I might have sat in on a few Dungeons & Dragons sessions, I've never actually played the game but I just happen to have somebody on staff who actually has played the game. And I think some of you might know him. Hi everybody, I'm Nerdlinger. Dungeons and Dragons is awesome! Don the guise of your favorite mythical hero to enter a realm of magic and adventure where every time you play, you embark on a new and exciting quest devised by the player that dons the mantle of... Dungeon Master. What do you think of my cape? Not only did D&D spawn the role-playing games of today, but it also spawned the greatest television show ever made, Dungeons & Dragons Animated Series! Where six modern-day kids are accidentally transported to the world of Dungeons & Dragons when they are given magical weapons and turned into heroes by the Dungeon Master. Just like in the game! Yay! There's my favorite character, Presto the Magician, Alicadabra! Then there's Hank, the Ranger, Eric, the Cavalier, Bobby, the Barbarian, Diana, the Acrobat, oh boy! And Sheila, the Thief, oh boy! Uh, is he done? <clears throat> anyway, so while I may have never played the game, I was still a big fan of the show. So imagine my excitement when I found out that they were making a Dungeons and Dragons movie. Sadly, then I found out that it wasn't based on the cartoon. But I was okay with that. After all, Dungeons and Dragons is a world only limited by your imagination, with infinite possibilities for all sorts of adventures. But then word got out that this film wasn't going to be directed by an experienced filmmaker, but by superfan Courtney Solomon, who bought the rights to D&D when he was 19 years old, and 10 years later got to both write and direct this movie. So what we're about to see is the first ever fan film made for a general audience. And you know, all of you could simultaneously punch me in the balls right now, and it wouldn't be nearly as painful as what we're about to see. So our movie begins with evil wizard Ismer, played by Jeremy Irons? Plus, he looks so clean cut that he didn't even bother to give a medieval look. No! The villain in the cartoon was Vender, who was a very scary man with bat wings, played by Peter Cullen from Transformers. Lion King Man is not scary. Calm down, Nerdlinger. Remember, this isn't based on the cartoon. And even if Jeremy Irons isn't very imposing, remember, he might have some of those scary monster minions from the game. He's wearing blue lipstick! He's wearing blue lipstick! Am I the only one who's seeing this? He looks like he's been making out with a member of the Blue Man group. Did somebody say, Hey, let's give him blue lips like Apocalypse, because he's badass. Anything else? Nah, yeah, he's good. Okay, I have officially checked out with the Smurf Muncher over here. I challenge you to show me something sillier than Captain Frostbite. <laughs> WTF? 
BTF mofo, this movie came out four years after Dragonheart. Aren't special effects supposed to get better with the years? Who did the VFX for this? The Sci-Fi Channel? Oh, I'm sorry, I meant the Sci-Fi Channel. So the clean-cut conjurer over here plans to create a staff so he can control dragons. And why does Dapper Dumbledore need to control dragons? So he can usurp the Empress, played by the uber-lovely Thora Birch, who happens to have a dragon-controlling scepter of her own. Legend has it that she is the most powerful and wisest in all the land. Any words of wisdom, your highness? After about five minutes of this movie, you're gonna wish you had ten beers. You are truly wise beyond your years, my mistress. So the sorcerer Scar finds out that the staff that he made does not work. And thus, we meet our hero, Ridley the Thief, played by Jimmy Olsen, from Lois and Clark. Actually, it could be far, far worse. Damn it! Yeah. Ridley the Savior. Let me guess, this is yet another movie where everybody pretends like Marlon Wayans is funny. Catch me. And who'd he beat on the ways down? Me. Are you gonna jump? <clears throat> so Ridley and Snails are street thieves, kind of like Aladdin. In fact, you know how in the beginning of Aladdin, they showcase how swift and smooth Aladdin is at thieving? Yeah, they don't do that here. So they sneak into the magic school to steal paper weights, I guess, when they are suddenly spotted by Nerdy McNags a lot. Coincidentally, at that very moment, Blueberry Puss arrives to steal a map that will lead him to a dragon scepter that actually works. And holy shit! This chick is badass! <laughs> Okay, they've got you cornered, so use more magic so you can get out of it. You know, do more magic like you did in the last scene. Ah, fuck it. Seriously? You got claws? Wolverine? My sentiment, exactly. So all hope is lost when who the fuck is that? So after they're saved by the random dwarf, our heroes relax at the local tavern, and they brought the dwarf along. Why? Because of his charming personality? Anywho, Ridley and the whiny witch figure out a way to enter the map, where they can find the location of the Red Dragon Scepter. And they're not going to show us what happens inside the map? Okay, let's see what snails and the dwarf are up to. What? Have on a chin you can hang on to! Oh my god! <laughs> la 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 la! A la 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 Let's just cut past this! A la 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 la! So the manicured magician is mad at Blue's clues for his failure, so he torches him to the style of Ricardo Montalvan. What if I put ooey gooey worms in your ears? They wrap around your brain and make you all crazy. Ridley and Snails agree to help Snobby Mac Crybaby to find the dragon staff. Why? Don't you think that's just a little bit out of our league? Yes! In a land filled with rangers, knights, and cavaliers, you turn to these two incompetent idiots for help? That's so dumb, it's. It's... I got a new name for dumb. Ridley. This is the Ridleyest thing I ever heard of. So apparently they can't get the scepter unless they have a red stone that opens the cave where the scepter is kept. Luckily, someone casted a magical plot convenience spell and the stone is being kept by the Thieves Guild. And these two jerks just happen to be members. So they go to ask the King of Thieves, played by Richard O'Brien, if they can have the red stone. <laughs> Wait a minute! You nag and wave your finger at anyone that even looks at you funny, and Richard O'Brien slaps you in the ass and you don't even say a word? Huh, let's see how a real woman would handle Richard O'Brien in the same situation. And that's why she's the Mistress of the Dark. So according to Richard O'Brien, Ridley must make it through a maze full of booby traps to get to the Red Stone. Okay, this should be awesome, as they got special effects master George Gibbs, who created a lot of the practical effects for Star Wars and Indiana Jones, to create the practical effects for this particular scene. I can't wait to see what new booby traps he cooked up. commissioned George Gibbs to rebuild the same shit he already built for other more famous movies. <laughs> you dumb bastard. Okay, so now the idiot brigade has both a stone and the map. So they have to go to the well-groomed warlock's castle to get the map back, but not before they hook up with, um, uh, elf girl? And whoa, what is the deal with the anatomically correct armor? Who the hell designed this, Joel Schumacher? 
Where is the girl? Oh, I'm sorry. I was staring at your stainless steel boobs. Did, did you say something important? So they go to sneak into the castle. Look, it's a beholder! And it looks really, really bad. The one in Big Trouble in Little China looked better. Nerdlinger, calm down. You're better than this. Just leave the fanboy fury to me. I'm sorry. So they break into the castle and Ridley can fight? Since when? I guess he's a surf ninja. So out of all the characters in this movie, it's Snails that makes it to the chamber where the map is kept. Really annoying line in 5, 4, 3, 2... I'm Demidor. <sighs> Why don't more horrible things happen to you? arrives just in time to see snails die. Jeez, did you take acting lessons with Jessica Biel? Ridley and Nags a lot escape the Maybelline man when- wait, what? Why didn't you do that earlier so you could only do magic when it's convenient? And for that matter, how come the elf and the dwarf didn't help? This task they must complete alone. So Ridley enters the Cave of Wonders to find the staff and That's the crime of trying to control the, the rock of Savril. I don't know, Grim. A lot of these guys look worse than you. Okay, so now our heroes have the stone, the map, and the dragon staff. Ridley arrives just in time to stop gorgeous Gandalf from summoning the red dragons. But first, he must fight Mr. I wear more makeup than the Empress. Okay, okay, stop, 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 stop! This shit happens way too often in the movies that I review. The villain is a complete badass until the last scene. In fact, it happens so often, I'm officially giving it a name. From now on, this occurrence will be referred to as a felon fuck up. Oh, look at that flippy thing! Is oh, I should have paid attention. Villain fucker. Okay, so Ridley finally faces off against the elegant enchanter. Okay, now listen to me closely, Ridley. Distract the wizard so the elf girl can shoot him with her. <sighs> okay, well maybe the witch girl can use her magic too. <sighs> oh, hey, you know the princess can control dragons. <laughs> the dwarf. You guys are a bunch of Ridleys. Wait a minute, who has the red dragon staff? Why don't you pick on somebody your own size? Okay, good, good, good. Now Ridley, listen to me closely. <laughs> well, I guess all hope is lost. What? The Empress got a dragon to eat him? Why did she do that earlier? Why do the characters keep forgetting about the abilities that they possess? Who wrote this 10 second Tom? Don't worry, you'll totally get over it in about three seconds. Get over it? I mean, what happened? Did I get shot in the brain? I... Hi, I'm Tom. his first movie and the studio did interfere a lot. Ah! Hey, okay. I think that says it all. So that was one busted, thousands more to go. I'm scum! And I'm the blockbuster buster. Check out my website, suckers!